Hello everybody. In this video we are going to draw the drawing for our second part of our model air engine which is going to be our connecting rod. So to start out in Fusion we want to go to our data panel and make sure that we are in the proper folder. And for this one I need to be in my CNC manufacturing uh, folder. Before we start anything, make sure that we save it. So we click save, and this is going to be O2 rod. We'll click save. We can close that down. And before we start drawing, we just want to double check that our document settings, uh, we are using inches for our units. Because everything that we'll be doing in this is in inches. So. We'll open up the print and we'll take a look at some of the strategies that we'll be using to draw this up. So we have two circles uh, that kind of make up the, the main part of our connecting rod here and we have these lines that uh, are at an angle that connect to it. Uh, we will base our drawing off of the center points of these two circles and that is at uh, 0.906 or 906 thousandths uh, apart. Uh, from there, we have some fillets. We'll be drawing circles for those, and then we'll extrude it. So this will just have one sketch, uh, and then we'll actually have two sketches. We'll draw this one first. We'll uh, put those holes in in a second sketch, and then we'll just chamfer uh, the tops and the bottoms of these holes. So let's go back to Fusion. I'm going to create my first sketch. And just like our last part, we want to make sure that we are on our X and Y plane. And from our origin, we're going to draw our line. So I'll select line. And this one, we are going to make sure that our line type is a construction line. We want to use this just for reference. We don't want to actually extrude anything out of this. So we use our construction line type. I select the origin and I drag my mouse over to the right just a little bit and type in 0 0.906 and press enter. Then we'll turn off the construction line type because I want to create my circles. I'll zoom in by scrolling down on my mouse wheel, select the center diameter circle, and I'll click on that center of my origin and I'm going to drag out and according to the print the uh, radius is 0.25 or the diameter would be 0.5 and the keyboard shortcut for a circle in Fusion is the letter C so I'll type C on the keyboard select the end point of that line and do a diameter of 0.25 there And when we look at the print, I've got these one, two, three, four spots here where we have a radius of 0.15, and I have my center points right here. What I'll do is I'll draw my four circles here with a diameter of 0.3, which is twice of 0.15, and then I'll draw my angled lines here, and we'll start playing with some constraints on that. So again, I don't have to come up and I don't have to press that. I can just press the C for the keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to click, drag out, type in point 0.3, hit enter, C, point 0.3, point 0.3, point 0.3. The next thing I need to do is select my line and I'm going to create a line like that, and then a line that is like that. My next step is to create a tangent constraint between uh, these circles and these lines. So select my tangent constraint, select that circle and that line, same thing right there, and then finally this one right there. The next step I want to do is I want to create a tangent constraint between this circle and that circle, and these circles and that circle. So we'll start on the top left, right there, 
And now we're starting to get somewhat of a shape that's kind of close to that. We'll go to back to the print. And we can see that uh, we have a dimension right here that is going to be 6 degrees for this line. And that this circle and this circle has, a, has center points that is 0.612 or 612 thousandths apart. And over on this side, these two circles have centers that are 500 thou apart. So I'll go back to fusion. And we will dimension from the center point there to the center point there. That is going to be 0.5. From the center point there to the center point there, this one is 0.612. And then finally, the dimension from that line right there to that is going to be 6 degrees. So now we're getting close, um, but we have some things that need to edit. So when we have all these constraints, and if you type or change one thing, you can get a whole bunch of uh, kind of wacky um, results. So to clear out, I'm going to go through and I'm going to fix this. We're going to hit escape on the keyboard. And my dimension went the wrong way. So I'm going to click on my dimension for my angle, my angle there. And I deleted it by pressing delete on the keyboard. And I'm going to drag and just bring my, um, bring my angle the way it's supposed to be. And now I can come in and I can set a dimension from there to there. It is supposed to be 6 degrees. And I'll hit escape. Let's see if we can drag this one back over. We're having a little difficult time with that because of our dimension constraint. So I'll just bring that circle back on over. And then redimension this to our 0.612. All right. So now we're getting really close. The last thing we want to do uh, before we start trimming things up is we want to make sure that we have uh, a vertical constraint. So this point needs to be perfectly vertical from this point and the same thing with these two. Uh, so we'll go to our vertical and horizontal constraints right there. Select the center of that circle and the center of that circle. And we see that it got vertical and because we have everything else constrained, these ones also are vertical of each other. Now we know a sketch is 100% constrained when everything is all black. Uh, if you have any blue lines, light blue lines, that means that you have a constraint that's not put in place and that you need to uh, change some things or add some constraints or dimensions uh, to make sure that it is um, perfectly constrained. We always want to have fully constrained sketches before we do any extruding because we don't want to have any surprises of things uh, disappearing or moving on us. So next up I'm going to take my trim and I'm going to start trimming the lines that I don't need. So we'll see right here that I just had a constraint or a dimension that was removed when I uh, trimmed that. So it seems that we're still fully constrained but if we uh, lose some constraints what we will have to do is we'll have to find what constraints we lost and then we will um, put them back in to make sure that we have a fully constrained sketch before we extrude it. So we'll start trimming out all of these circles here. And I've got a few last parts that I need to extrude out or cut out. Didn't mean to delete that one. If you need to hit, if you need to undo something, so let's say I accidentally trim that out, uh, you can either hit undo trim up on the top here, or what else you can do is you can press Control Z on your keyboard, and that will do the same thing. All right, so I have a fully constrained sketch, and I am ready to extrude. So I'll click Finish Sketch, and I will press Extrude right there. And just like before, what I want to do is I want to drag down. 
So we're actually going to be going into the negative because it's a little bit easier for us to draw this way when we were machining um, so that our, our work coordinate system is already going to be in the top left or in area over here and that our work coordinate system will match up right away uh, when we are um, running our cam. So we'll take a look at the print and our part is 0.45 down or 450 thousandths. So I'll type in negative 0.450, press enter. We'll go back to the print. We have two circles right here. One is uh, 265 thousandths going all the way through and the other one is 135 thousandths going all the way through. So I'll come back and create a new sketch and this is going to be on that top face. I'll draw a circle First off on that origin, and this one has a diameter of 0.265. And then we'll create a, another circle over on this side. Now, if we bring it over and we bring it to the center of this, we'll notice that uh, around my cursor I've got a, a circle. And what that is, is it's a symbol for the constraint that we are aligning the center point of my circle to the center point of that arc right there. So I'll click and drag out, and the diameter of this one is 0.135. And I'll press enter. So we're going to finish that sketch. We'll press extrude. I'm going to select both of these and we can drag all the way through. Now, it's good that this is red here. That means that it's cutting. If you don't see that, if you don't see the red, if you see a uh, silver there or um, anything like that, uh, that means that we're going to be adding material. But in our operation, what we want to do is we want to cut. So I'll press OK there. The last thing that we need to do on our print is we need to put a chamfer on all four of the all four uh, sides of these holes. So there, 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 and there. And our chamfer is 10 thou by 45 degrees, both on the top and the bottom. We'll go back to Fusion. And I will go to Modify, go down to Chamfer, and we want to make sure that we have an equal distance. Uh, chamfer so that on both sides it's uh, 0.01 or 10 thou. So we'll click on that top circle right there and that's going to be 0 0.01. And then we'll also we'll hit enter there. I'm going to right click and edit that feature and we can add uh, a selection. So we'll select that one. I'm going to orbit around, hold down shift and click my scroll wheel flip it over and select that one and then finally that one and that is going to be a distance of 0 0.01 and then we'll press enter. So then that is uh, the end of your part. Be sure uh, before you um, before you do anything else what we want to do is we want to right click on our document settings we are going to select our physical material and all of our uh, parts that we're going to be making are made out of 6061 aluminum so we'll come on down to the metal and scroll down to 6061 aluminum right there and we're just going to drag that material onto our part uh, when we're done with this, what we'll do is we'll uh, check your weight on this and show it to your instructor. And we'll see you in the next video when we learn how to run our CAM strategies on this.